Good morning, Pastor Quick, Reverend Donovan, and First Baptist. Welcome to Third Sunday, Youth Sunday. I am Tania Gladden, a senior at North Brunswick High School, soon to be graduating and attending William Patterson University in September. I will be studying sports medicine. <laughs> Many of my peers have made decisions about what they will be doing and where they will be attending college. I just wanted to congratulate them and say that it is our duty to make an impact, a spiritual and educational impact on the world. We are God's children and keep it in line with the season we are in. John chapter three, verse 16 says that, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God gave Jesus to us in love. Let us go out and show others what God people can do and we will do it in love. Now, let us get ready to worship.
let us pray. Almighty God, be present with us today and always, and dwell within our hearts. Lord, we come before you today with thanksgiving in our hearts, and we thank you for your blessing that you have given us. Be with us now as we gather in your name. Bless this service as we honor you. We thank you for the youth of First Baptist. God, we ask that you will cover us and keep us safe. Protect us from all dangerous, seeing and unseen. In Jesus' name, amen.
Good morning, First Baptist. I hope we can say we can feel the spirit moving all down in our soul because we've came to lift up the name of Jesus higher and higher. Did anybody come this morning with a praise on your lip? With your heart filled with praise, with a heart filled of thanksgiving, you would say, I will bless thee, O Lord. We've come to bless the name of Jesus this morning. We've come to lift him high. We've come to glorify the name of the Lord because God is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, our Lord is worthy to be praised because we feel him down in our soul. We feel him moving all over. We see him moving. We can sense him moving. And that is why we've come to give God praise. And God is so much worthy to be praised that we've come to celebrate five who've come to give their life to Christ this morning. They've come to be baptized through the ordinance of the church to signify that they are a part of this body of Christ because they feel that God is moving deep down in their souls. And I hope that there are some believers here tonight or today who can testify that you have been in that same experience where you felt God moving deep down in your soul and that led you to say, I must be a part of the body of Christ. And today we celebrate the five who've come to join the body of Christ through the ordinance of baptism. So let us turn our attention to the screen. Isabella Lee Sam. 
we come today to baptize our dear sister in the presence of her parents, a scholar and an athlete. We praise God that we are watching her grow up before our eyes and grow into a lovely young lady. She has declared that Jesus Christ is her Lord and Savior. And so now we take her to the water, baptizing my dear sister in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Take me to the water to be baptized. Take me to the water. Take me to the water. Take me to the water. Spencer Anderson. We come to baptize my dear brother Spencer. And Spencer is partly responsible for me being here. For 18 years ago, I came to watch Dr. Sori's bless Spencer. Amen. And it was the first time I came to First Baptist. And so what Dr. Sori's did 18 years ago, I have the privilege of finishing today. Amen. We baptize my dear brother as we did his brother in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The water to be baptized. Take me to the water. Robin Carrington Bedoya. So this is the matriarch of the family. And following her is her grandson. Before her are other grandchildren and a daughter. I think we've almost baptized everybody in your family. So I think we have one more to go. Okay. We're going to get all y'all. But that comes because somebody had to raise them set an example for them. Yeah. So we praise God that we now baptize our sister. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
righteous shall see God. Christian Carrington. Our dear brother Christian is a sophomore at Woodbridge High School. Amen. Next month is his 16th birthday. And God has brought him in the presence of mom, grandma before him. The Bible says from generation to generation, your God is her God, her God is your God, Amen. and their God. Amen. And so my young brother, we are now pleased to baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. family. So the angels in heaven are rejoicing with us as we praise them. Uh, this concludes our baptismal service, and if you follow the direction of the ushers, they'll lead you back into the sanctuary.
joining First Baptist, I'm Jackie. And I'm Jade. And this is Crosstalk, where we bring you FBCLG stories, news, and information centered around the cross. Attention all juniors, seniors, and parents. For those who are registered, the Scholarship Ministry is hosting the College Prep Workshop taking place today, right after service in the Fellowship Hall from 12.30 to 2.30. So see you all soon. Just a reminder that Spring Revival will be taking place April 23rd through April 25th, featuring guest preacher, Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby from Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church in Houston, Texas. Additionally, we will be honoring trailblazers within ministry each night with the Reverend Dr. DeForest B. Sorry's Legends of the Chase Award. On April 23rd, we will kick off revival honoring our very own Pastor Emeritus DeForest B. Sorries. On April 24th, we will honor Reverend Dr. Stephanie Minity of Community Baptist Church in Inglewood, New Jersey. And on April 25th, we'll round out revival honoring Bishop Donald Hilliard Jr. of Cathedral International, the historic Second Baptist Church in Perth Amboy. Save the date because you will not want to miss this. If you took part in the African Ancestry Identity Experience on February 25th, mark your calendars for our African Ancestry Reveal Party on Sunday, April 28th, following service. as we unveil our DNA results and celebrate our ancestry. Don't forget Sunday, April 28th, God's Garden, our nursery for children potty trained from ages two to four years old, and youth church will be taking place. Both events occur every second and fourth Sunday and are designed to allow children and youth to participate in corporate worship. With Mother's Day right around the corner, we invite you to visit our bookstore Sundays from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. If you make a purchase of $50 or more, you will receive a free Pashmina scarf with your purchase. This promotion is running until the end of May, so stop by the bookstore. Well, thank you for tuning in to Crosstalk, and remember to check out our events page and social media to stay up to date on what's going on at FBCLG, the place to be. Good morning, First Baptist. If you all didn't believe my name was quick, now you do know. I have changed clothes. God is good, y'all. And, and how amazing is it that every month for three years, we have baptized a number of people. That is a beautiful thing because our mandate is not to come occupy a building. It is to take the good news out and bring folks into a belief in a faith that has carried us through a mighty long way. And so we praise God. The other thing we should be celebrating is it's multi-generational. People are reading reports that young people don't go to church anymore. They need to come see what's happening at First Baptist because God is good. So I wanna celebrate a couple of things. One. When I went to sleep last night, I was in California. When I woke up this morning, I was in New Jersey. When I went to sleep last night, it was 64 degrees. When I walked out my house this morning, it was 48 degrees. Y'all not praying hard enough. It is April and we are waiting for the warm weather to hit us, amen? But one of the things I wanna celebrate and I, I'm sorry I was out of town, but on this week, Reverend Donovan Pinner preached his senior sermon at Princeton Theological Center. And we celebrate him. That's a big deal. It's a culmination of three years of hard study and work. He has managed to do that while being faithful 
here at First Baptist. So we celebrate him and all that he's done. I also understand that we've got small groups in the house. Okay, so if you're not aware, we have small groups. They're all over New Jersey and they are growing all over the country. And several of those groups are here visiting with us in person today. And we are excited to have you all. Some of y'all are color coordinated. You're taking, yeah. Oh, you have your shirts on. Okay, Deacon Earl wanted me to know they motlin together. <laughs> but we are so excited to have all of you here and we look forward. We've got a little reception downstairs. I'll get a chance to meet everybody. I'm excited about what God is doing in our small groups. Some of you have been in small groups together for almost 25 years. And I'm glad to see our small groups are growing. Small groups are our effort to make sure that we are the smallest big church in the country. That they gather, they pray, they support each other, they study what happens in church, and they prepare each other to move forward into the world. I'm excited. Would you join me in celebrating our small group ministry? And then we have uh, a team from Fleischman Hillard here today. That's their day job. They are also a part of the Can Diversity Collective. And they go all around the world to spaces that people that look like you and I can't even afford to go to. I, I am marveling at the fact, because I didn't know this, that many of the world's largest decisions are made in spaces that are not on paths that many of us can travail. The World Economic Forum in Davos, right. forums in Dubai, forums in Iceland. I wonder why they meet in places like that. First, you gotta be able to buy the $5,000 plane ticket. And then you gotta be able to afford the $2,000 a night hotel room. But if you can do all that, you can sit next to Jamie Diamond, the Vice President of the United States, the major corporate leaders all over the world, and they gather and they talk about what they're going to do with the world. They talk about how they're gonna divide up Africa and where they're gonna put economic stimulus. And guess who typically is not at that table? People of color. Because we can't imagine paying $10,000 just for a plane ticket. Then you have to have a, a pass that sometimes is thirty dollars to $40,000 to sit down at these meetings. But you do know that Joe Biden isn't making all the decisions in the White House. That corporate 50 companies are deciding the plight of the world in spaces that you've never been to. So I'm, I'm pleased that this group of dynamic young women, led by our own Adrian C. Smith, has taken hundreds of young people, raised the money so that they can sit at the table in these spaces, be involved in these conversations, and even one day work or own businesses in these spaces. They have sometimes been the first black representation at these major power conversations. They have decided to worship with us today at First Baptist. Would you join me in welcoming the Can Collective Diversity? This year they are raising over $2 million so that people of color can be a part of these important conversations. So before I, I take my seat, I, I was in California. Yesterday was World Earth Day. Some of you didn't know that, but you knew it was 420. 
If you laugh, you know why it was 420. If you don't, you real saved and God bless you. <laughs> but I had the chance to speak at the greening of the black church. We talked about agricultural and economic empowerment for communities. Do you know that there is one company in the United States that controls 99% of the poultry market? That one company in the United States controls all the chicken you eat. One private company that your food is designed and manufactured based upon your location. That to eat healthy food, you have to live in certain zip codes and have access to certain stores. That before they build a Whole Foods, Whole Foods conducts an economic survey to make sure that where their market is located, the community around it is economically advanced enough to eat their food. That the problem is not food scarcity, it's that food has been capitalized to the point that markets determine when and what people eat. It is a sin, it is structural, it is steeped in racism, it is designed to kill, it keeps you on medications because you are getting substandard food. It is a massive corporate system that is depleting the health of much of the, con of the world. And so, First Baptist is partnering with the greening of the church and we're talking about agricultural and economic justice. We believe that all people have the right to clean, fresh, healthy food. That there should not be food deserts. And as you know, Senator Booker was here with us last year Senator Booker has, in wisdom, joined the Agriculture Committee. What you may not know is that certain farms are subsidized by billions of dollars. That means some farmers are given billions of dollars not to grow as fast. So that the market prices of your corn and your wheat and your eggs are being manipulated by the government giving them billions of dollars not to produce as much as they could. But the one farming group that has not been included in this, that is missing in large numbers, that are losing land, are black farmers. Black farmers are being systematically erased across the North American landscape. And so part of our vision here is when First Baptist is prepared, I believe God has called us to buy farmland somewhere here in New Jersey, take inner city kids out of their neighborhoods to God's earth, teach them how to farm, teach them how to be economically self-sufficient, we are not arguing for food stabilization. We are fighting not simply for equity. We are fighting for an economic justice where everybody has an open shot at the market and everybody can use their own skill set to support their families. So soon we'll be talking about how to do community gardens how to farm in your own house, in your backyard. Some of you all know when you got sick, grandma used to say, baby, I got a, a herb for that, or a root for that. Now we call that homeopathic medicine. 
Y'all said grandma just went to a little jar in the cabinet and two days later you felt better. So we have to be mindful that civil rights is not just about the right to vote. It is about the right to eat and not die because you're in the wrong neighborhood or you don't have as much money. So I was honored to be their speaker this year. We talked about economic justice. We talked about food justice. We talked about the global food system. And we are looking forward to First Baptist leading in having these faith conversations because the black church cannot ignore the health of those who sit in their pews. And I am excited about what God is doing for each and every one of us today. As I was on my way here, I was thinking about how many of us are just struggling to make sense out of life. We're watching war in the Middle East. We're watching poverty expanded here. How do you make sense of it all? And, and many of you are stressed and you don't even know why. There's, there's so much around you that's stressing you. But I think the number one stress that many of us have is wanting other people to be who they are not. The root of your disappointment is false expectation. When you learn to let people be who they are and stop trying to control them, stop trying to change them, and forgive yourself for getting caught up in it, then you can have a life filled with peace. I'm wondering how many of you all have been guilty of trying to make somebody who they not. Of trying to force somebody to be who they can't be. They've told you who they are and they've told you what they're gonna do and you just ignored it until they hurt your feelings. Then you get mad at them. Today, my prayer for all of you is that you release people to be who they are. And after you release them, be who you are. There's so much stress involved in trying to make somebody who they don't want to be. And so this morning, my prayer is for release that you release the things that aren't in your power to control, that you just let it go and give it to God and focus on what you can fix. Focus on what's under your command. Anybody ready to let something go? Let go of what you think it should be? If you've ever said to somebody, I wouldn't have treated you like that, that's why you're not them. Our prayer is for release today. And I'm going to invite somebody who needs to let something go to come to the altar. Now, when you come up here, be ready to leave it here. Don't take it back with you. I let go of trying to make that child what that child ain't meant to be. I let go of trying to fix other people. I let go of trying to control things that aren't in my power to control. I let go of my false expectations. I let go of my anger and my frustration. I release it so that God can fix me. I let go of trying to play God in other people's lives. Let it go today. Let it go and, and allow God to, to give you the grace that only God can grant. I let go of my anger. 
I let go of my jealousy. I let go of my envy. I release it so that God can open space in my life for what's next. I let go of my disappointment in myself and I forgive myself. Let's sing it along with them. If you're standing up here, just say, I let it go. I release it. Can't fix it. Can't control it. It ain't my business. I let it go. Make space in my life. What's meant for me. I let it go. I'm open to God. I let it go. I forgive myself. I let it go. Whatever you do, don't take it back with you. Let it stay right here. And every negative feeling that's associated with it, every worry and every pain, let it go. Give it to God and watch how God can make a way out of no way. We'll be led in our prayer this morning by Reverend Donovan. Let us pray. God of our weary years and God of our silent tears, thou the one who has brought us thus far along the way. Lord, you are our light and our salvation. Whom shall we fear? Of whom shall we be afraid? God, when the wicked comes against us, God, you raise up standards. And God, we thank you for that this morning. God, we thank you that when we are weary and heavy laden, we can run to you and find safety. God, we thank you for that this morning. God, we thank you for being God that hears our prayers, God. God, thank you for lending your ear towards us this morning, God. And we come this morning with a lot on our hearts and on our minds, God. So we've come to release and let it go to you, God. We've come to put it all in your hands, this and that. No matter the problem, no matter the situation, God, we've come to put it all in your hands. So this morning, God, we know somebody is, is sick this morning. God, somebody in our families and our friendships, God, are, are going through situations where they don't know where to turn, God. So God, we come asking that you would intervene in their lives, God. God, this morning we come to asking that your balm of Gilead would be poured upon everyone's life, God, that is sick and shut in this morning. 
God, those who have ailments in their body, God, those pains that they cannot find relief to, God, we know that you are a mighty good healer. God, you are the great physician. God, you are the one who can heal all. And so, God, we come trusting in you, God, that you can still heal all of our sicknesses. God, this morning, somebody is bereaved this morning, God. Somebody was here last night, but is gone this morning. And so, Lord, we come asking that you would comfort those families this morning, God. God, we ask that you would pick up their bowed down heads, God, and wipe those tears from their eyes. God, we ask that you would comfort them when they are lonely and are afraid. God, that you would be their friend when they're friendless. God, that you would be that voice when they need to, to talk to someone. God, we ask that right now that you would comfort them. And God, some of us are weary about the days that are ahead, God. We don't know what tomorrow may bring, but God, we know who holds tomorrow. So God, we come asking that you would direct our paths, God, that when we are weary and, and, and worried about our future, God, that we will know that you have plans for us, God. Plans to prosper us and not to fail us. Plans to give us hope and a future. God, we come trusting in you this morning, God. God, we put it all in your hands. No matter the problem, we put it all in your hands and we claim back peace, God. God, out of your hand, we come and, and grab power, God. Out of your hand, we know that you can give us grace that surpasses all understanding, God. So we lay down those petitions, God. We also pick up joy this morning, God. God, we ask that you would give us joy in the midst of our sorrow this morning. God, we ask that you would give us peace in the midst of a storm, God. God, we ask you to help us move forward, God, to keep our eyes on you, God to look unto you, the, the author and finisher of our faith. God, we will give all that we need from you this morning. So God, speak to our hearts and our minds, God. God, give us rest for our weariness, God. God, be with those who are out on the streets this, this time of the year, God. We ask that you would bless us and keep us, God, as we go to and fro, God. God, we ask that your hand would be upon our communities, God, that you would let your light so shine, God, that we can be beacons of light in this community, God. God, we ask that you would continue to be with our country in this land, God, that you would bring about peace in the midst of violence, God. God, somebody needs you right now, and God, I ask that you would touch them right now and let, their, let them feel your goodness this morning, God. God, we come to release and to let go, God. God, we know that you are a mighty good mind regulator, God. So God, help us to regulate our minds, God. Help us to trust in you, God. And help us to continue to lift you higher, God. Knowing, God, that you can do all things but fail, God. So God, we thank you in advance this morning, God. We thank you for the joy that we will have, God. We thank you for the peace that is on the way, God. We thank you for the relief that is on the way, God. We thank you because we know that you are with us, God. And God, with, while you are with us, God, you are already working it out, God. While you are with us, you already made it all right, God. And so we thank you in advance for the already all right, God. God, we thank you in advance for it is well with our souls, even right now, God. We thank you in advance because we know that we can trust in you despite the circumstances. So God, we say hallelujah. God, we say all the glory and all the praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Anyhow, this morning we have 
to thank the Lord for the five that went to be baptized this morning. And now we're going to welcome them back into the sanctuary. So all, let's stand and welcome back all of the newly baptized members of the body of faith. Let us welcome them in this morning and let's give God praise for them. And while we are thanking the Lord for those who have been added to the body of Christ, it is time for us all to participate in thanking the Lord through the time of giving. It is offering time, church. It is time for the return. It is time for us to thank the Lord by the means that God has given to us. And so this morning we have another high school senior, Mr. Tamir Gladden, who is going to come and help us through our return. Tamir. Good morning, First Baptist. And my name is Tamir Gladden, and I'm a senior at North Roslyn Township High School. Just like my twin sister, Tamia, I'll be attending Warrior Passion University in the fall. I plan to study communications, but I also plan on playing football. Church, it is time for the return. We give back a portion of what God has given us. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 2 through 5 says, that of the most severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty wound up in generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability. May we be faithful in our giving today, perhaps even beyond our ability. There are many ways to give and they are shown on the screen. Cash app, Zelle, send in a check, and right here in the baskets in the sanctuary. Now let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, we pray for your blessings today as we come to give you our return. We ask that you will bless us as we give. In Jesus' name, amen.
Sometimes you got to speak over yourself. Not anybody's testimony. It doesn't matter what they say, but what do you say? What do you say about yourself? What do you say about what you and God got going? Sometimes you got to pat yourself on the back. Stop waiting for other people to affirm you. If God be for you, who can be against you? If the Lord is on your side, what you worried about? If you know what you know, when you know, how you know, who you know, where you know, encourage yourself. Somebody just say, God, I trust you. You made me for this. I am ready. Encourage yourself. I've been through too much hell to worry about what they think. Encourage yourself. God, release us now from all the things that will infect our spirits. Open us up to your will. Allow your grace to wash over us and your mercy to move through us. We give you thanks for this moment, for this fellowship. Fall fresh on us, Lord. Move me out the way, for I have nothing to say. Your word has spoken for centuries. Reduce my ego so people see not me, but only a manifestation of your mercy. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O oh my Redeemer. And we will give you the glory and the honor. Amen. Our word today for all you God chasers is out of Acts 4. The book of Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4 beginning in verse number 13. I'll be reading out of the New Revised Standard Version of the text. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and realized that they were uneducated and ordinary men, they were amazed and recognized them as companions of Jesus. When they saw the man who had been cured standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. 
So they ordered them to leave the council while they discussed the matter with one another. They said, what will we do with them? For it is obvious to all who live in Jerusalem that a notable sign has been done through them. We cannot deny it. But to keep it from spreading further among the people, let us warn them not to speak no more to anyone in this name. Mm. So they called them back and ordered them to not to speak or to teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered them, whether it is right in God's sight to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge. For we cannot keep from speaking about what we have seen and heard. After threatening them again, they let, it, they let them go, finding no way to punish them because of the people. For all of them praised God for what had happened. For the man on whom this sign of healing had been performed was more than 40 years old. The word of God for the people of God. Pray with me on this thought. Trigger warning. Trigger warning. I've heard this term used quite often. We seem to be using this term, I've been triggered. And many of us don't necessarily understand the psychological implications of the term. Words become cultural without real depth and understanding. To be triggered is related to deep psychosocial issues. It is connected to trauma. Sometimes we are not triggered, we're annoyed. Sometimes we're not triggered, we're just frustrated. I, I wanna offer some caution about using these terms, just as I offer you caution about using the term love. You don't love your car unless you have serious emotional problems. We use that term so loosely that it has no real meaning. Yeah. It has been made empty because we don't understand the depth of sacrifice that real love must carry with it, that love carries commitment. You are not committed to your red bottoms. And yet you say, I love my red bottoms. We actually hit the love button on Facebook page to, to, to things we find amusing. Triggered is another one of those words that if we are not careful, we will make it empty and therefore make it unable to be used for the people who are actually triggered. Trigger, to be triggered is connected to trauma. Now, the, the, the most basic understanding of the word is that when you are triggered, something has occurred that reminds you of an event that has a special significance in your life. You can be triggered through smell, through sound. Certain words can trigger you. Certain people can trigger you. It means that it's taken you back somewhere and, and therefore it has offended the sense of peace that is now residing in you. Grief creates triggers. You can have a home going service for someone and take two years to walk into the closet and take their clothes out. You're triggered every time somebody says their name. The grief becomes fresh and new. I want to suggest to you that there is also theological meaning behind triggered. If you give me a few moments, I will show you that sometimes your Godfidence, that's confidence through God, can trigger other people. And if you know what I know, you're going to stop apologizing for telling somebody what God has done for you. Amen. Matter of fact, if, if you're around me long enough and you don't like what God does, I'm going to trigger you. I'm going to get on your nerves. 
If you come to me with all types of negative stuff, I'm going to trigger you because I'm going to talk about the goodness of the Lord and how God has been faithful to me. I will trigger you if you want to come to me with mediocrity because that's not who my God is. If you want to come to me telling me what God can't do, I'm going to trigger you because I'm going to give you a list of things God has already done. And here the sensibilities of the religious authorities have been triggered by two disciples. This was not my sermon at the beginning of the week. It became my sermon yesterday afternoon. After my speech, one of our minister's daughter, who was a baby when I was pastoring the church, walked in, and this baby is now 10 years old and almost my height. This baby triggered me. The conversation upset me so deeply that, that I couldn't get it off my mind. They were in the back seat and she was telling my daughter about her school and, 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 and all the things she's doing, a beautiful young black girl. And she said, sometimes it's hard being in school. And my daughter said, why? She said, because I'm the only black person there. And my daughter said, so? She says, and the other kids, Sometimes they mean. And she said, why? She said, because they know I'm different. And then her mother stepped in because she heard the conversation. Her mother said, but you know God gave you that black girl magic, right? She said, that's right, mama. <laughs> but it made me think how many of us dim our light because other people don't like your shine. That as people of color, as women, you've had to subjugate how talented you are in order to make other people feel good and be not threatened. As black men, we've lived in this country and been told, don't look that officer in, your eye, in his eye. Keep your head down. Don't you stare at that woman. She ain't black and that could get you killed. There are all types of things that have been meant to subjugate our self-esteem, make us walk in smallness. Why is it that women do as much work, are even more talented and still get paid less? Are they afraid to ask for the wave, rage they are deserving? So many of us live our lives in shadows because other people have conditioned us to believe that we don't deserve the best. And here this 10 year old girl is having to navigate racism because her mama has decided to give her the best education possible. And here she is. But this little girl, she had, she had glow. We were, we were there and she said, I, I'm a part of the San Francisco Girls Choir, and we all applauded. She said, you want to hear me sing? <laughs> and we were like, okay. Um, uh, and she started singing. We were like, okay, this is happening. <laughs> but she sang a cantata in Spanish. Why is she worried about her blackness? And all of us, who've been the only one in certain spaces, know what it's like to have to carry the weight of all your people, to have to represent everybody and still not be recognized as equal, still have to fight to be included, still have to be seen as excellent. And no matter what you do, you never get there because you have to shrink in order to make mediocre people not feel threatened. But there ought to be something about your God that don't mind triggering people. There ought to be something deep inside of you that doesn't find yourself down or depressed or in anxiety because you're the only one in a space. Ought to be something about how you feel about yourself that allows you to do what you got to do no matter what. And when you know who God made you to do, be and what God made you to do, you can start walking in the rooms and saying, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you now, you're going to get triggered with me. I'm not afraid. I am made wonderfully and fearfully. I'm not here because somebody forced me. I'm here because I deserve to be here. And now that I'm here, I'm going to open the door up so other people can come behind me. I'm about to trigger you. And yet, 
Some of us can't get there because we're so busy, so consumed, worried about what other people think of us. And I'm here to tell you, if you spend a good part of your day upset, anxious, frustrated, annoyed because you worried about what other people think about you. So my daughter asked her, well, what do you, what do you think about that? And clearly she had been coached by her mama to know what to say. She said, that's their problem. I love being black. <laughs> and she's okay that one of her best friends is Asian. She's okay that she can love a Jewish sister. Because when you are confident with who you are, you ain't got to be mad at nobody else for what they do. You can celebrate difference because you can celebrate your difference. But when you need everybody to look, act, sound, and think just like you, you're going to be worried about what they say and think about you. Would you allow me just to give you a few things to help you stop worrying about what other people think about you? You see, the, the first thing you need to know is focus on what matters. See, some people have an opinion about you, but they don't feed you. They don't help pick out your clothes. When you need your depends changed, they ain't going to be there to do it. Why are you worried about people who don't invest in you? You got to focus on what matters and pay attention to the things that are important. And secondly, remember, most people aren't really paying much attention. You know, most people form opinions about you and they've never talked to you. Why are you taking the opinion of people who don't really know who you are and giving it meaning? No. Stop judging people by what somebody else told you and take the time to get to know them directly. Amen. Number three, keep it in perspective. If two people don't like you but 500 love you, why are you fixated on the two people? Sometimes we are so focused on the ain't that we can't concentrate on the gift. Anybody who has x themselves out of your life has done you a favor. Let me repeat that for you. I love people who say, I don't like Pastor Quick. I'm leaving. <laughs> Never force yourself to be in company of people who you know don't want your company. Learn to feel good enough about you to do you. Keep it in perspective. And number four, Nobody knows you like you know you. Why do you take their opinion as fact? The internet is a problem. Because for the first time in history, somebody can say something about you from around the globe who's never actually interacted with you. Things end up on Facebook and Instagram, and talk shows, and podcasts, and they have no basis in fact. See, one of the great adjustments I had to learn coming to First Baptist, I had to learn that there were more cameras, more people watching, and more opinions. I, I was comfortable in my smaller church because nobody was paying attention in the same way. It's different talking to 1,000 people than talking to 10,000 people. And I have read things on Facebook and it's made me laugh. Because if you are grounded in the truth of you, nobody's lie should calm you. Now don't get me wrong, sticks and stones may break your bones, but words can hurt you. Only words that you make valid. Opinions from people that you honor. Everybody else? You need to shake the dust off your feet. You know you best. And if you know what you do and don't do, you can take a critique without falling apart. Number five is 
Mind your business. <laughs> See, when you mind your business, you really don't have time to pay attention to what anybody else is saying. Stop lurking around your ex's Facebook page. If y'all ain't together, leave them alone because they click in the champagne glasses because they know you watching. <laughs> All the Facebook, Instagram games you play. Me and my new boo, you don't like that girl. You was trying to make the one you love mad and she falling for it. Minding your business gives you a sense of insulation and peace that money can't buy. Uh, lastly, desensitize your triggers. Once you know something will trigger you, create a boundary around it. Create a boundary around people and things that send you down the wrong path. See, there are certain people that I know when they text me, uh-uh, you trying to set me off. I'm not going to give you that power today. They don't hear from me because once they showed me who they were, I believed it. And after I believed it, I created a boundary for it. Desensitizing your triggers are putting the necessary things around you that allow you to move in a way that is positive and progressive. I love all y'all, but all y'all not going to like my sermon. Some of y'all are thinking, when are you going to be done already? <laughs> Find yourself a trusted group of people that can give you an honest opinion in love. Stop thinking that everybody is qualified to tell you about your life. I have a very small group of people who I go to about pastoring this church because they're the only ones who would know how to pastor this church. Therefore, anybody else who tries to tell me how to pastor this church, they can have an opinion, but they got a whole lot of stuff. But this small group of people are successful, and I allow them to give me critique and opportunity in a way that desensitizes me from the triggers of other people. The disciples are in this strange situation. They have what I call Godfidence. Confidence is different than confidence. Confidence is what you have from your own sense of being and presence. Confidence is formulated by how other people affirm you and about how you see yourself. But Godfidence, Godfidence comes from how the Holy Spirit has implanted in you a certain sense of clarity and love and action that allows you to understand that you and God can, together can do almost anything, that you and God together can walk through fire. You and God together, well, maybe that's a bad example now. See, there's a difference between Godfidence and mental illness. We are watching mental illness all around us. A young man went to the Trump trial and set himself on fire. We're in the midst of a mania in America that requires massive mental health. Godfidence cannot replace your therapist. I got confidence because I know who the Lord is and I know what the Lord has designed me to do. And my confidence gets me over my insecurity so I can go see my therapist. And my therapist helps me deal with those things in my life that I'm not ready to deal with on my own. Godfidence makes you smart enough to submit to something higher. Godfidence tells you that you can do what other people don't think you can do, but Godfidence also gives you a sense of accountability. Uh, Peter and John have confidence and, and listen to how they trigger the council. The Bible says that they are preaching and teaching and they have healed a man and that man is now walking around and the council, which is the Jewish Supreme Court, has come together and has called them into a place where they are called to give account for themselves and be silent about what God is doing with them. The first thing you should know is that confidence will give you a praise that is a precursor to your privilege. See, many of us are waiting to find privilege in what other people tell us we are. But when you have confidence, ain't nobody got to tell you who you are. When you have confidence, nobody can tell you how qualified you are or not. 
When you have confidence, you can be 5'2 and still make the varsity team. When, when you have confidence, you could have not learned how to twirl a baton and still become a starting cheerleader. When you have confidence, God can open doors that you're not qualified on your own to walk through. And here they are standing before the Jewish high council and listen to what they say. These men are unlearned and ignorant. I love that. You see, sometimes people don't know you, but they'll start trying to define you through their own insecurity. Y'all be careful of people who've never really assessed you, but have negative things to say about you. Y'all be careful about people who have negative things on their tongue about you, but they've never stopped to talk to you. These two disciples have raised a man who was lame, and now they stand before the Jewish high council, and the first thing the Jewish high council says to them is, y'all ignorant and unlettered. You want a piece of good news? The good news is if somebody talking about you, it's because they notice you. Ain't nobody talking about somebody who ain't doing nothing. I love the trigger people. And when I go places, I love when my name is on their tongue and I ain't done nothing to them because I done triggered you. You can see the God in me before I got there. And you know what God has done for me. And I'm getting on your nerves because you want to do what I'm doing. But my sense of confidence don't have time to get low just to hang out with you. Stand up and be who God called you to be. Stop hiding your light to make insecure people comfortable with you. You see, the third pastor of this church, he got all types of confidence. The Forasaurus walks into every room like he own it. <laughs> and if he don't own it, he believes 20 minutes in, I'm going to own it soon. <laughs> and everywhere I go in this country, people ask me, how in the world have you managed to follow the forest stories? It is the number one question I get asked. They either saw him on CNN, or they know he was the Secretary of State, or they know he ran the Federal Elections Committee, or they know he founded D Free and has taken more than $300 million out of black people's debt. They know something about him, or they know the patch, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the swagger. And they always ask me, it is the number one question I get amongst clergy, how in the world have you been able to follow him? And my answer is just being who I am. I can't be him. I can only be the best version of me possible. But what I've learned is that anytime you do something successful, there will be unsuccessful people mad at you. And y'all better learn to stop giving credence to people who aren't credible. All right. They stand there before the council, ignorant and unlettered. Well, if they all that, why y'all meeting with them? Let them go be ignorant somewhere. But there's a crowd following them. And wherever you're doing something good, other people will notice. Pay attention to the people who cheer for you and not the people who jeer against you. Too often we're so busy trying to get somebody to like us that we're ignoring the people who love us. Teach your kids, roll who's willing to run with you and let everybody else be with God. Y'all can't talk about that Jesus here. First of all, you ain't smart enough. And they stand before the council and start giving an account of themselves. Because when you have confidence, confidence will always give you privilege. Confidence will always open doors that you shouldn't walk through. Confidence will always give you places that you shouldn't be in. 
You'll meet people you shouldn't meet and do things you shouldn't do. Pay attention to how God is making ways for you that you're not qualified to get into. Pay attention to how God has given you opportunity that you didn't deserve or earn. Watch how God will put you in position for the Bible says your gift will make room for you and put you in the presence of powerful people. Stop shrinking. Trigger people. Well, the second thing confidence is, is confidence gives you a predicate of praise that is proof. See, you ain't got to convince people about certain things because there ought to be some God proof in your life. There ought to be some things in your life that are proof that God is real. Y'all stop debating people about if God is real. That ain't an argument you can win. You can't convince an agnostic person that your God is real. You can't make an atheist believe that your God is real. That's not your job. Your job is to walk in such a way where they can see God in you. And when they see God in you, you ain't got to argue with nobody about who God is. Last week, I, I, I had a plumber come to my house, a very nice gentleman. We were polar opposites. He was a 55, 60-year-old white male coming to fix something in my home. I was sitting in my library, and he came in. And he, he said, sir? I said, yes. He says, I'm done. I said, okay, what do I need to pay you? He said, well, let me figure that out. He says, uh, can you give me a piece of your mail? I said, why do you need that? <laughs> he said, well, I'm not that smart, and I, I want to write your name and address down, and if you tell it to me, I might not be able to write it correctly. I said, no problem. I, I gave him a flyer that had come in the mail, and he took it. He came back into the office. He said, you got a lot of books. I said, well, thank you. <laughs> Glad you noticed that in my house. <laughs> then he said, you think Obama's going to run for president? I said, oh, God. <laughs> what was clear to me is that this man was trying to make some connection to me. He was trying to come into human interaction with me. He didn't know how to do it, so he thought he'd go to a place that we could connect with each other. It was a beautiful thing. My books had triggered him. And even though he was a white male, there was something about this black man sitting in all these books that made him have to second guess his ability to interact with me. So I had to show him who God was. I said, my brother, I don't know if Obama's gonna run, but I know who's really running the country. He said, well, who, that is? who is that? I said, that's God. He said, God? I said, yes. He said, don't, I said, don't let these books true you. 90% of these books are telling me something about the God I serve. And the God I serve is what put me in this house. And the God I serve is what keeps me safe from day to day. And the God I serve. And we ended up having a 25-minute conversation about God. And what I've learned is no matter what color you are, no matter what sex you are, no matter what, if you got a God on your side, that God will trigger other people and love will prevail. We got to stop arguing with people about Trump. It don't make sense to them. <laughs> but what you can say is, as Americans, we ought to value and honor all women. We ought not call women and tell them we're going to touch them by their parts. Women should be valued. What they gonna fight you about? No, women should not. See, confidence gives you a way of talking to other people that is not argumentative. Godfidence allows you to talk to other people in a way that starts relationship and forms value. Godfidence allows you to show the proof of who God is in your life. 
The Bible says that Peter and John are standing before the council, and then it says something you may not have paid attention to, and the man who they had healed were standing next to them. And then the Bible says that the council really didn't have nothing to say because the proof was right there. And sometimes the stuff you want to fight about, you don't need to fight about. You just need to say, look at me. I'm a living testimony. I'm the proof that God can do all things. I'm the proof that God can take a little nobody, and I can tell somebody about the one who can do everything for everybody. I don't argue with people about stuff that is my proof. And I got too much proof to be frustrated by you. God has done too much for me for you to tell me what God can't do. God has opened too many doors for me for you to tell me what door God can't open. God has made too many ways for me for you to tell me where I can't go. I'm just wondering, is there anybody here with some proof that God can do the impossible, that God can do the amazing? Is there a cancer survivor with some proof that God can take you from stage four to remission? Is there an alcoholic with some proof that God can take that taste out your mouth? Is there a single parent with some proof that God can put your baby through class? Is there somebody who knows that God can do amazing, abundant, above and beyond? I am the proof. Can't nobody tell me about God. He put shoes on my feet and clothes on my back. He done fought too many battles. I am the proof. I ain't got to fight you about nothing. You ain't got to look at my resume. Because the more I walk in the room, I walk in like proof. Black man in America could have been dead and gone, but I got proof because I'm still here. And sometimes, beloved, proof is our very presence. Because sometimes you can be in places and yeah, you're the only one there, but you got proof. On my flight out, it was an early flight and I was going to my seat, and it was an all-white cabin. And here I come walking in. And the flight attendant looked, and I couldn't tell what G or E was. So I'm looking around, and she said, sir, do you belong in this section? And I said, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm confused. What are you asking me? She said, well, you look a little lost. You do know that this is first class. And I said, oh. Oh, 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 okay. I, I, I see what's happening. And it was so bold that the young white woman sitting down was like, oh. And I said, well, what, what makes you think I'm lost? She said, well, you were looking up. I said, well, I was just trying to make sure that my seat is my seat. Yeah. And she said, well, what seat are you in? I said, I'm in A. But that young white woman is sitting in A. Yeah. So I'm wondering if it's really my seat. And she said, oh. I said, no, no, it's okay, it's okay. I said, it doesn't take my PhD to read A on this, does it? <laughs> and she said, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. I said, don't be sorry, get better. Because <laughs> when I showed her my ticket, I had proof that that seat was my seat. And that's why I came to ask anybody, do you have proof that you belong in the room because God made you wonderfully and fearfully. Do you have proof? Because your grandma got on her knees and prayed you through school. Do you have proof? Because you studied all night long and got an A on the exam. I'm just looking for somebody who knows you belong in the room. Well, 
Here's the last one, and, and I'm done. Your praise should empower your purpose. See, one of the reasons we don't have proof is because we don't know our purpose. When you know your purpose, all types of stuff open up for you. When you know your purpose, doors will begin to swing open that you didn't even know you were supposed to walk through. And listen to what they say. The council says, now, yo, we're going to send you all away. But what you cannot do is talk about this Jesus no more. We can't do anything else right now. But we're going to let you all go. Just stay quiet. Do you know how easy it would be for them just to leave and not say what they're going to do and just do it on the DL? like many of y'all do. <laughs> you know, when you go to your big corporate dinner and everybody sits down and you don't want to say grace because you don't want other corporate big wigs to think you one of them Christian nuts. <laughs> or, or for all my college students, when you go into the cafeteria and you sitting next to the boys and you don't want to pray over that hot dog before you eat it. See, see, we want to be closeted Christians when we think it works. I'm not even mad when y'all go to the club. Y'all done heard me say, go drop it. <laughs> be holy when you do it. Drop it like this, right? <laughs> yeah. Don't get ratchet with it. But, you know, do it with a little, you know, a little grace, a little, you know. I'm naughty enough to know what naughty is, but you know, <laughs> you ain't going to find out for a long time. Your, your, your praise should make you audacious and bold. It ought to be times when you're ready just to walk into a place and have a worship party. You ought to wear your faith like a badge of honor. Because when you know where the Lord has brought you from, and you know what the Lord has brought you through. I ain't going to let no rock cry out for me. From generation to generation. Anybody had one of them grandmas who had a fifth grade education and here you are with your MBA, but she prayed you through that thing, baby. And you the first one to go away to college. How dare you get on that campus and deny who grandma is because you don't want to pray her prayer. You better go and let somebody know how God brought you up out of some stuff, brought you through some stuff. Your purpose is to give God glory wherever you are. And when you give God glory. God will open doors for you and make ways for you. Doesn't matter where I am, I can have church anywhere because the Lord is everywhere and he brought me through. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So here's what I'm going to tell y'all. Y'all need to walk around with a trigger warning. Because every time Peter and John walked around, the heads of the church got annoyed because every time they entered the room, they started talking about Jesus. And every time they talked about Jesus, it started to annoy the Satan that was in the room. And that's what some of y'all need. You need to have trigger warnings so that that devil that is waiting for you on your job will see you come in and say, that ain't the one right there. That's a prayer warrior. And when your boss, is the one trying to get on your nerves? Uh -uh, that ain't the one. Y'all, I had a job, and, and, and my boss was Satan's first cousin. <laughs> I was fresh out of college, stocking at Kmart, putting cans at Kmart, trying to make a way. My boss didn't like me because I would go to Kmart wearing my little Morehouse shirt. And he thought, you think you better than everybody. Well, clearly I don't, because I'm here in Kmart with you. <laughs> and the break room, the break room was a, was a mean place. Because they'd wait until I come in and be like, yeah, he think he cute. That's why he got that two to five shift. So one day I decided I'm going to trigger everybody because they don't know who I am. 
They don't know my grandmama collected cans for me and caught a bus to clean somebody else's trash cans. But my grandmama did it in a fur coat. She'd put on her uniform when she got to work. I got pictures in my house of my grandmother with two or three presidents didn't graduate from high school, had a baby in middle school, but my grandmama had confidence, confidence. And when she walked out the door, you couldn't tell her she wasn't going to work in Ronald Reagan's office. You didn't know she was going to clean Ronald Reagan's office. And because of her, I decided I ain't gonna let nobody make me feel bad. Whether I'm in Kmart or the White House, I know who God made me to be. I know the sacrifices of people who came before me. I refuse to allow myself to be bullied by other people, so I went into the break room before they did. And I sat down at the table. You know, they had a cool kids table at Kmart. And so I sat down at the table, and, and, and I remembered something my therapist told me at the time. He says, just do something good, and it will repel evil people. And so I, I went to that break room, and I bought sodas and sat them around the table. And they all walked in, and they were going to sit there. And they said, hey, whose sodas? Did I said, I bought them for y'all. They said, well, why'd you do that? I said, because my, my, my mama and my grandmamas, they raised me right. And they said, well, what's that mean? I said, because when people try to misuse you, love defeats evil. They looked at me like, what? You calling us evil? I said, no, 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 not at all. I just want you to know that I'm only gonna sow seeds that grow something. And they started looking at me I said, see, see, what you don't know is I believe in God, and God told me to pray for those who would misuse me. I started quoting scripture in Kmart break room. <laughs> and by the time I finished quoting the scripture in Kmart break room, the boss came in. What's going on in here? And my coworkers said, leave him alone. See, when you know Jesus, Jesus will get other people to fight your battles. Because when you're the proof and you know what God made you to be. See, what I started doing was helping them with the stuff they didn't know what to do. So they started bringing me mail they couldn't understand. And I started hosting little things in the break room because I wasn't trying to really lift no boxes. So they started lifting boxes for me because I decided to use my strength and my strength is in the Lord. Bye-bye, First Baptist. I just came by to tell you, y'all better learn to trigger some people. When you go into spaces and places, let the God in you get on the nerves of the Satan in them. Trigger some people and walk in the light of God. Trigger some people. The Lord will fight your battle. Trigger some people. Let God make a way out of no way. Trigger some people. And watch God do it. May God bless you and keep you. The doors of the church are open. Please stand. You are stronger than you think you are. What I'm trying to tell you today in my own simple way is you will get on the nerves of people who mean you no good if you show them the God in you. And the first way for you to show them the God in you is to commit your life to God. I'm inviting somebody who's been trying to figure it out and you haven't been able to figure it out. God is the answer. Just step on out and trust God today. I'm asking you to commit your life in a way that allows you to see possibilities you've never seen before. To walk in spaces other people said you should never be able to walk. To trust God in ways you didn't even know you were capable of. Now is your time to trigger some folks who mean you no good. You ought to trigger negative people. And when you trigger them, you thwart the plans of the enemy. Now is your time. We open the doors of the church for you. Thank you. Trust God today. If you're at home, you can hit the yes button.
God bless you, my dear brother. We're waiting for you. We're waiting for you. Trust God today. Now is your time. Beloved, you may be seated while we receive our newest family member. she is by now. Good morning, First Baptist. I'm uh, Deacon Stevenson, and uh, this is Kimani, who has uh, given his life to Christ and wants to be baptized. Is this the last one we were waiting for? It's a few more. I love that your proof is showing to everybody in your family. That's all it's about. And if all of us live our proof, the church will never be empty. My dear brother, I'm excited that you're here. Do you believe in God? Have you had a personal interaction with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? You ready to be a part of First Baptist to be a bright light in the dark? Okay, you, I, ain't, I ain't got to finish this in. You know, yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm ready to do it. Are you ready to participate in the public act of baptism? In a world where we are praying and seeking God for the health and safety of black men, where sometimes we're afraid to let them walk outside our front doors, it's a beautiful thing that young brothers are coming and giving their lives to Christ. Amen. So we gotta go, but I, I wanna do two things really quick, if you all will help me, and, and if the people who are willing to help me will do it very quickly. This young black man should know that he never stands by himself. I'm just gonna ask five or six other brothers to come up here and stand with him. Just come and stand here. Y'all can stay up there with him. Stay up there with him. First Baptist, if you are a witness, say, we got proof. We got proof. Welcome to First Baptist, my brother. <laughs> it's time to go, but I want y'all to know, this is what 
healing and church looks like. That if we keep doing this, Satan can't have our families, can't have our community, can't have our sons, can't have our daughters, can't have our finances, that together we are stronger than the forces of the enemy. I just believe that we're going to kick down some doors and free some people and make pathways that have never been walked before. I just believe God has anointed us to do amazing things. And if you believe it like I believe it, let's go out and live amazing lives this week. Let's do something bigger and better this week. Let's make it count this week. And so as we prepare for our benedictory songs, brothers, do, do you mind just staying here and singing with us? Reverend Donovan is going to lead us in our doxology Amen. and closing prayer. Amen. As we sing together our closing doxology. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may it rest, rule, and abide with us now, henceforth, forever. Let us all join in and say, Amen. Go out and have a great week. The college prep is going on in the seminar room, and the small groups is meeting in the fellowship hall. And families of our baptism candidates, would you please come for photos. with us at First Baptist Church of Lincoln Gardens. For more information on our services and ministries, please visit us at fbcsomerset.com.